Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to The Elder Scrolls Online, my name's Camel, and this video is going to be a showcase for the new motif, I do believe it's motif 46, called the Stalhrim Frostcaster style, which can be purchased from the Crown Store exclusively. So before making that purchase, is it worth it? Well, let's find out. Firstly, we have the light armor with the robes, pretty interesting, the robes aren't a full robe, they're just kind of like a... Looks like a dressing gown or a bathrobe. That's pretty interesting. We definitely see a lot of fur going on. That's definitely a common theme throughout the Stalhrim armor set, or at least the Stalhrim Frostcaster armor sets. There are a few speckles of actual Stalhrim, which is actually the style material for the set. As we can see on the darker material of the hood and the chest piece, there are some intricate kind of branched or snowy designed patterns. I'm not really too sure what they are, but it does give a cold. Feel. Capped, of course, with the furry hood. Now we have the light armor set, but without the robe, and instead we have the tunic on. Top half looks identical to the robe, just the bottom half is different in that it's not there. This gives us a chance to check out the top half of the pants, which just seems to be some bound cloth. Pretty cool set, it's not too in your face, yet if you look at any specific part of it and analyze it, you can see some frosty themes. Whether it be the fur, the delicate patterns, the shards of Stalhrim, or just the snow flake-esque design in general. Not amazing, not bad, it's it's just pretty good. Next up we have the medium armor set. It doesn't look too different to the light armor set. On the hood we still have that delicate pattern, we still have the fur that's a theme running across every piece of the armor set. We also have the pieces of Stalhrim sharding, again just letting us know what the set's style is. The chest piece looks much more reinforced and layered than the light armor set did, definitely replacing most cloth parts with some kind of leather looking part or texture. The pauldrons on the shoulders have gained an extra spike and the leg pieces look a bit more armored than the cloth ones, but apart from that, not too dissimilar from the light armor set. And finally for the armor sets we have the heavy armor set and check out those little leather booty shorts. <laughs> Pretty interesting choice, I don't know why they didn't just go chainmail legs the whole way, but I do like this set. This is cool, I especially adore the chainmail fur hood, that's something pretty special, but I feel like the, the leather parts, the chainmail parts, the straps, the metal parts and the style rim shards really do all fit together and deliver a quite menacing set, but at the same time, a charming, frosty, fur-studded set. And now moving on to the weapons, first up we have the one-handed axes. And personally, these are my favorite one-handed Stalhrim axes that we've seen in any Elder Scrolls game. They're definitely more jagged and raw looking, less refined, compared to any of the one-handed axes we've seen in previous Elder Scrolls games, both Skyrim and Morrowind. The shape of the head of the axe is closer to Morrowind's Stalhrim one-handed handed axe, but that was smooth and as we can see these are really rough and jagged. And again I prefer these ones, these feel much more raw and tribally Nordic. The handles are pretty damn long, but that's not a problem at all. Altogether I'm a massive fan of these one handed axes. I love the shape of the head and the spike on the back and the top, and it definitely now has the Camel Works tick of approval. And now we're moving on to the one handed swords. Now these definitely resemble the one handed swords from Skyrim, although they actually more closely resemble the two-handed Stalhrim swords from Skyrim. But again, I love it. I love how the pommel is a sharp, jagged shape opposed to the circular shape we've seen in previous Elder Scrolls games. The handguards are awesome. I love that they're long, thin, and pointy and fit in perfectly with the sharp, razored edge of the Stalhrim sword. Really cool design, even though they've pretty much stayed 100% traditional to the Skyrim Stalhrim sword. As Todd Howard would say, it just works. Next up, we have the one-handed maces or warhammers. I think in this case, it's more of a a warhammer. As you can tell, it looks like a hammer. It doesn't seem to have a front or a back, both sides seem to be equally as pointy and rounded, and would serve the exact same purpose in battle. Again with the really long handles, and the head of the mace, or the warhammer, is like 50% of the size of the one-handed maces from Skyrim, the Stalhrim one-handed maces. Which is good, this design definitely looks better and looks like, if they were to be made in real life, this would be much more what they would look like. I love the way the faces of the Warhammer seem to be glowing somehow, like they're capturing the light, like a diamond in a ring, like reflecting the light back in some icy way. And while I do like these Warhammers, the Stalhrim does look a bit like some kind of blue honeycomb. Next up we have the two-handed axes. Now the head of this axe seems to be an exact replica of the head of the one-handed axe, except they put two on the handle instead of one. Except that little spike on the top there in between 
between the two is different from the two spikes that were on the one-handed axe head. Seems to be much more of one of like a quartz crystal shape than a gnarled icy curly spike. It does its job, it's cool, it's got a nice long handle to get some reach. I feel like they might have been able to get away with making the head of the axe a little bit bigger. I don't know if it's necessary, but from some angles, I feel like the head of the axe looks a little bit small, like they could have made it like 10-15% bigger, or perhaps longer, like downwards, it looks kind of compressed and chubby. But nonetheless, I would not want to be hit with this. Now we have the two-handed swords, the claymores, the great swords, and I'm actually quite happy with these, not specifically or entirely because of their design at face value, but because they're not a carbon copy of the one-handed sword which we see in so many styles. And of course it looks similar because it's a sword, but it does actually have some differences instead of being literally a scaled up version of the one-handed sword. Those two spikes coming out of the blade towards the bottom of the handle, they are new additions. They look cool, and I think they're actually the same spikes that were on the one-handed axe head at the back. The handle's pretty long, and I think because of this the blade almost looks a little bit too short for the handle, but we do get that vibe from all of the blades in this style room weapon set. But a lovely blade, I just would have liked to have seen either the handle smaller or the blade longer, just so it looks a bit more proportionately correct. In fact, I think it is proportionally correct. It's the fact that the handguard goes up so far, it kind of drags the illusion that the handle goes up even further than it does. Now we have the two-handed mace, or the battle hammer, whatever a two-handed mace is called, and I do believe this is an exact scaled up version of the uh, one-handed mace, or the one-handed warhammer. It almost looks a bit goofy. I think it's to do with the cylindrical shape of the head. When it's a big two-handed mace like this, it looks like a a carnival mace where you hit one of those things and the little thing goes ding, up the little slider where you gotta hit the bell. One of those strength games you see at circuses or something like this. It does look pretty epic when you're swinging it around but when you stop and look at it kind of closely it does lose that charm just a tad but comparably to other maces this is a pretty damn cool one. Now we're moving on to the cutlery, the daggers. Almost copying the shape of the one-handed swords although they do kind of retain the width of the blade while of course sacrificing about half of the length. Again with those long, long handles, and it also has that same handguard thing where it looks like the handles are going way further than they actually are. But then when the handguards come off and they just have those two brutal long black spikes, that really complements and contrasts the shape of the blade, and the colouring of the blade too. Pretty cool, and they also have this kind of unique bit of black metal that comes up beyond the handguard and into the base of the blade there. That's not on the greatsword, nor is it on the one-handed sword. So that's an interesting little detail, it also doesn't have any of the spikes that come out in the middle. Again, rendering the shape of the dagger actually unique compared to the other two swords or blades. So again, hats off to whoever did that. Next we have the bow, and wow, this looks pretty much 100% different to what the Stalrim bow in Skyrim looks like. This looks much thinner, much more delicate, it's a completely different shape, well as far as bows go, and along with pretty much every other piece in the set, I much prefer the ESO version. In Morrowind we didn't have Stalrim bows, so I cannot compare the two. But more importantly this one, this one in the Elder Scrolls Online. Really cool, I love how long it is. It looks long and thin, it almost looks like the leg of a Daedra spider. Really cool, I love the little Stalrim shards that accent and complement and contrast to the black of the wood on the bow. And then we have those fairly big claw shaped Stalrim spikes on the ends of the bow arms. Again, really cool, I'm a big fan of the delicate look, yet the brutal, crude, jagged and merciless feel we get from this Stalrim bow. Of course, the arrowhead, very unique shape, I feel like they almost went for some kind of snowflake influence at least. It doesn't look like a snowflake, but it looks like some kind of shape or pattern that would occur naturally in ice or snow. And it looks pretty menacing. The quiver's pretty cool, I just wish instead of that brown we could have a different colour there, that would be quite nice. But nothing too bad, really. And at the end of it all, yeah, this is a really cool bow, I'm a big fan of it. But ultimately, we have the Starves, which is probably one of my favourite pieces of this Starfrim Frostcaster set. The head of the staff is epic. Now because the staff is mostly just the plain wooden staff, the pole bit, the straight bit, to have a standout staff you need a big staff head, and this definitely hits the nail on the staff head. Anyway, it's an awesome shape, it almost somehow reminds me of like a scarab beetle 
while still reminding me of the shape of the arrowhead. But again, it looks menacing, crude, brutal, rugged, raw, unrefined, and unrelenting. Next time I craft a star for my character, at this point anyway, I'm definitely going to use this style. The staff head is what looks cool, but then the staff itself doesn't have anything on it to distract you from the staff head. So it's kind of modest while still being flashy. It's a sick looking staff. Finally, we have the shields, the Stalhrim Frostcaster shields or shield. I don't particularly like the style and I don't particularly dislike the style either. Although there's definitely more Stalhrim accenting than on the armor set, compared to the weapons I feel like they needed a bit more of that white blue Stalhrim look. Quite a lot of it is just a black metal or whatever color you choose to turn your shield. And I suppose if you have unlocked the rather rare, very light ice blue color dyes, you might be able to do something with the shield. And of course, it's all down to personal taste. The shape of the shield, it's not a face. Every time I look at it quickly, I think it's a face. And then I look at it for a bit longer and I figure out that it's not a face at all. But the actual shape of it does resemble the uh, arrowhead shape and the staff head shape. Not completely, of course, but there are definitely common themes amongst them. And in case you're wondering, it looks completely different to the Star Rim shields in Skyrim and Morrowind. So, final thoughts. I've got a couple. The Star Rim Frostcaster set, or style. Now, the thing I find interesting about that name, Star Rim Frostcaster, is that it's not just Star Rim, and it's not just Frostcaster. Originally it was the Stalhrim set, then when you buy the motif it's called the Frostcaster set, and then in the lore library it's called the Stalhrim Frostcaster set. So I feel like they changed their mind a couple of times, but why this is interesting is that I think they might plan on introducing different Stalhrim styles in the future, hence they added Frostcaster to the end and not just simply Stalhrim. But all in all, the armor sets we saw in this video they all look pretty cool, they're all very similar, carrying two themes across all of the sets, the first of which is being the little studded decorations of Stalhrim shards, and the second being fur, both of which make complete sense. But it's definitely interesting to see two themes consistently put into all three armor types. And you might be thinking that these armor sets look significantly less Stalhrim-y than the Stalhrim armor sets we've seen in Skyrim and Morrowind, and that's because the building material isn't Stalhrim. The majority of these armor sets are made out of other materials, and then the style is Stalhrim. So it's got elements of it in there, but that's why like the whole armor set isn't just Stalhrim itself. So because of that, it does look pretty different to what we've seen in the past, but I think just looking at the armor sets, you probably can tell that it's Stalhrim. And then of course, don't forget that it's actually Stalhrim Frostcaster, which is, I suppose, something different to what we've ever seen before which it obviously is. All of the weapons were pretty damn cool, I say. Most of them were above average. There were a couple in there that were really cool, like the bow and the staves were probably my two favorite. And if they changed the other weapons too much, it could have gone two ways. It could have looked awesome, or they could have completely ruined the Stalhrim look. So I do like the way that they respected previous Stalhrim weapon looks while changing them a little bit, but for the most part, I wasn't blown out of the water with the weapon designs. And to be honest, I don't think I should have been, but the bow is completely different and it looks awesome and the staff looks awesome too. So I think I would have to go with the staff being my favorite weapon and the heavy armor set being my favorite armor set, which is normally what happens with the armor. But a staff being my favorite weapon in a set? Don't think that has happened before. So an out style -hrim ding job. Oh, oh. <laughs> And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Camel, and this has been my showcasing for the Stalhrim Frostcaster motif, which is motif 46, which could be subject to change, as the motif number had to be mined from game files, and isn't actually stated in the game anywhere. Regardless, it can be purchased right now from the Crown Store, for a limited time only during the Christmas celebrations. And I do hope that this video helped you in choosing what you want to wear on your character, and whether or not you think the purchase is now worth it. Be sure to like, 
share and comment with your favorite weapon and armor from this video. Individual links for other weapon and armor showcases can be found in the description along with my Twitter link. I highly suggest you follow to guarantee you are notified when I upload a new video. Please consider subscribing, it helps me out greatly. You can check out the playlist on screen now. Thanks for watching, thanks for supporting the channel, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.